Hello everyone, my name is Li Hao. Welcome back to Introduction to Transitions. In the previous video, we've seen how we can add transitions to elements using the transition directive, as well as we can control a different in and out transitions using an in and out directive. We can have different kinds of transitions such as fade, we can have slide and blur. So in this video, what we are going to look at is how we can coordinate between transitions. So take a look at this example. If I click on this button, the item will fade in and the items will fly in, uh, slice in at the same time. Right? Let me do that again. Two transitions happening at the same time. Is it possible that we can coordinate them such that the first transition happens at the first and then after that subsequently on the next transitions. So it is possible to do with a property called delay. So in here we can look at transition fades taken 400 milliseconds. Over here on all the items we fly in and the default delay is 0 seconds. So which means that these two transitions is happening at the same time. So if we want to make this happen right after the fade in of that list, what we can do is we can add a delay of 400 milliseconds as well. So this fades in in 400 milliseconds and 400 milliseconds later, the item flies in. So let's take a look at the effect. Right, take a look at that again. So fades in and then after that, slides in. So if you don't want the elements, say in this case, to slide in all at once, what we can do here is we can have the delay based on index of the item. So for example, if I add an index, so this is the index of that item. We can add 400 milliseconds times uh, plus index times 300 milliseconds, right? So it depends on where the item is, it will have a different kind of delay, right? So let's take a look at the effect right now. If I have multiple items, if I close it, one, two, three, right? One, two, three. So here is how you can coordinate uh, in between transitions using delay. So the next thing I want to show you is this. Let's take a look at what happened if we close this list. Well, it's not that obvious, um, but let's change this to slides and let's take a look at it again. So when I close this and focus on this item, when I close this, it slides up when it closes, right? Because this element is going to be removed together with the parent. And when it's being removed, it will play this out transition, right? But what I want to do is that I don't want the transition of this element to play when I'm removing the parent. I'm okay when I want to remove this element itself but I'm not okay to play that transitions when I want to remove the parent. So what I can do here is to provide a modifier called local. So let's take a look at how this local effect. When I close, it does not play the transitions, right? So the local modifier makes that these transitions will only happen when this element itself is being removed or being added. But if this element is being removed together with the parent, the transitions will not be played. Right? So if I removed it, you can see the transition. By remove the parent, it will not play the transition. So if you take a look at here, when I try to add an item, it takes a while to be added. And it takes even longer to be added for the third item. That's because the duration for the transition elements is based on the index. So that is what we're going to fix in the next video. So thank you for staying till the end. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to stay notified with my next video, please hit the subscribe button down below. As always, stay safe and well. See you next time.